This is Commander Brewski coming back at you with another update from the Buckyball Race Club's Close Encounters. Please ignore the uh, slight noise in the background behind me. They're repairing some landing pad back there. I think there were a few rough landings at the final station. Coming from Osric. He had to do something this morning he wanted to avoid because it makes a bit more hassle for him. But apparently the reasoning shall become clear later. We're going to start in Unlimited today because only one of the eight entries were in that class, and that was a new entry from Commander Stevenson flying the hauler and adding yet another ship to their growing list. Breaking into the top ten on the first attempt, it's a very nice solid start to her Unlimited Assault. You can also now see the times in all their glory. I have a 30 second lead and Alec and Skur are, why, why would you let, no, don't show them the times, then they know what to beat. I am totally screwed now. Why would you do that? <sighs> Alec and Skur are only separated by a second. I, I, I like how Osric conveniently leaves out the like giant lurking orca in the background. I guess it's a type seven, not an orca of Shea Blackwood in fourth place who hasn't had an entry in several days. Meanwhile, I'm cowering here just wondering how many minutes are going to get shaved off all at once. Anyways, so the times are up. excellent. Moving along to regulation. Uh, there was action all across the board. So unlike one entry, first up, we've got Commander Inga Stevenson. And although Inga felt she was too aggressive on the landings, is such a thing possible? They still managed to break the 25-minute barrier, which was the goal. In fact, just over two minutes was knocked off the time, moving her a few places up the leaderboard. Next up is Fearless F21, who also made a huge improvement, knocking off a minute and a half to also bump up a couple places. There was more improvement from Sir Boundness, who says it's maybe, but it's not beautiful. Maybe not, but it's another improvement of over a minute, and that bodes well for getting close to that 25-minute barrier. Remember, that is somehow the magic number for this race. Everybody is breaking the 25-minute barrier. Keep on improving, keep getting better. But it's only good enough for 11th, because as well as the improvement from Inga, we also had another minute and a half improvement, this time from Air Route 66 who despite the curse of not having the landing gear deployed at the final stop, ouch, that's one of the most frustrating feelings, still managed a big time crunch, shame it's just a hair outside of the 25 minute barrier. And the last two entries saw some changes near the top of the board. First up, we had an improvement from Kevin the Stabber, knocking off about 30 seconds, which considering to how close the top of the leaderboard was, was enough to push him from fourth up to second place with a time of 23.48. Fortunately, doesn't affect me at all because I wasn't even in fourth place. Thank you, Kevin. That had pushed Mr. Turner down to third place. Oh no, but he also submitted a new run. As he intimated above, he initially thought the run was slower than his previous best, but on double checking thought it was nine seconds quicker. Sometimes with those long runs and the supercruise approaches and the landings, you can't quite tell what's going to be the best. Worth submitting, isn't it? Definitely, as it gave him a time of 23.48. So now we have a tie for second place on the leaderboard at 23.48. Alec Turner and Kevin the Stabber in Ask Again Later and Marianne Cobretti. And Edelgard now finds himself in fourth place. We're coming into the home stretch. What more twists and turns await? Make sure to avoid getting eclipsed at Robert Aiken. I can speak from experience. It is painful. It added on a minute to my run, and I just bailed. I couldn't stomach finishing that. So good luck out there. May the planets be in your favor. And remember, keep getting those super crew reports in.